What are you about to do, John? Uh, we're about to change trailer bearings on a Sea Scout trailer. Um, this is a home-built Sea Scout trailer, but it's the same size stuff and the same style of stuff that's in the Melgus trailers. Um, largely through and through, at least up to sea, exposed through Sea Scouts. Um, and the fundamentals all apply as it gets bigger, too, up until you're in an axle with brakes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what do you have here in preparation to get going? Um, number one, this is going to be a messy job. So first I have a hundred pack of gloves. I've got a roll of paper towel. Um, next thing I've got is my tools. Um, I've got a couple screwdrivers. I've got a rubber mallet. I've got a bearing grease packer, which is a quick way to pack the bearings when they're out. Um, you can certainly also do it by hand. I've got a seal puller. Uh, I do enough bearings because everybody comes to me to do their bearings that I've tooled up. Um, you could pry the rear seal out with a screwdriver, but this was about 10 bucks and is much easier. And then for driving in the bearing races, I have a, and the seals, um, you could do that with a piece of steel, but I've got a nice kit that will drive it in there. That was about 40 bucks on Amazon. You know, not that much money if you change bearings once a year, at uh, least. Are any of these things available at a rental place? Uh, I don't. Really? I don't know. Um, they're cheap enough that I've just purchased them. Yeah. Borrow from a friend or buy. Yeah, borrow from a friend or buy. You know, all in. These two tools are a total of about fifty bucks. And do you know how much it would cost to have uh, somebody else do it for you? Um, the last time we had one done on the road, it was about a four hundred dollar change. So it's well worth having so, the tools. So it's well worth having the tools if you're willing to get a little mess. And then I have my stuff to do the bearings. So for starters, I've got a wheel bearing kit. Uh, that includes the two bearings and the grease seal on the back. Um, this is a cheapy set. Uh, this axle has enough damage to it that I'll probably buy another axle for it and make this a spare axle. So I'm using cheapy Chinese bearings. Normally I would use high quality Timken bearings. And the plus is that it lasts longer? Um, it's the consistency. Really I haven't seen tons of problems with the cheapy Chinese bearings. Most bearing failures are due to grease failure or water intrusion. So, okay. with that said, um, there's definitely a difference with the quality of a Timken or an SKF bearing. Okay. So, you know, a bit you get what you pay for, and I'm taking a chance and not having the best stuff here. Okay. The last thing I've got here in terms of parts, um, I have a Bearing Buddy spindle seal kit. And on the other side of this trailer, the, uh, after the bearings failed, the, seal, the rear seal failed. And you can see over on the wheel there that the grease has spun all over the inside of the wheel. So it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. So if you look at the two wheels, this one has grease all over and that's an indicator that you've had a failure. And I didn't wash that off yet because I knew we were going to film this. But after we're done here, I will absolutely wash that off so the next time I have a failure, you can see. I can see that. Most of your bearing failures in a scow trailer will be related to that inner seal going, mm -hmm. and you'll see the grease spray before you have other stuff fail. Oh, excellent. This feel failed so badly that the seat where it rides had a big groove in it and it would eat up new seals, which is why I had that seal kit I just showed you. Yeah, and so that's what it would look like if it were not dirty. Yep, and there's a little bit of grease on there, but it's not nearly as right. coated here, so I expect that that seal is also bad, okay. but not nearly as bad as this. This trailer, as you will see when we take it off, has an internal greasing system. Um, you can certainly grease by hand and seal it. The other thing is a, this is a bearing buddy, which has a little grease fitting and is spring-loaded so mm -hmm. that you can pressurize the grease in there. Okay. Not a huge fan of these. I have it in the kit because I had an oddball size spindle. Mm -hmm and I couldn't find a normal dust cap. I was using it as a cap more than the pressurized. But um, on these easy lubes, there is this rubber cap, and that gives you access to the grease port. I always keep spares of that around. They're really cheap. This started as a five pack, and there are three left. Um, so what that does is it lets you into the grease right there. You can see this grease has turned black and gross. Mm -hmm which is indicative of the fact that it's failed. Okay, right. Um, so, I always keep these around. Right here they like to crack, and as soon as you let water into your oh, grease, you're in trouble, and that's, you know, the four pa a four-pack of five-pack of these is a couple bucks online. It's good to have around you, before you go on the road, especially if, you if you're backing down a ramp at your destination. Right. Just check it, throw a new one in if you need it, okay. or you will have problems on the way home.
Now, do you, before you take a ride, you, you check for grease on your wheel so on, to see if you've had any failure? So I'll pull the cap off, look, for, look at the grease, see if it's turned colors. Um, the other thing that is a great in indicator, I've got a, let's start with a little safety. I am hitched to the car and I've got, got the parking brake set. Okay. So because this trailer is so light and movable, the last thing I want to do is be working on it and have it fall. Mm -hmm. And I probably wouldn't hurt myself, although I could, but I'll drop the spindle on the ground and muck up the threads. Yeah. And that's never good. So I'll hitch to the car, set the parking brake. And now I'm just using a jack stand here. And these trailers are light enough that I can just go. So, so the next thing I'll check before I go on the road is I'll spin the wheel. And, and you're looking for? This is pretty silent tonight. Um, the other side made a big grumbling noise when I spun it. That's indicative of a problem. The other thing I'm seeing here is if you look at these treads, there's uneven wear. You can see it, it's increasing mm -hmm. on every tread here. It's sloped on every tread. Yeah. Sloped on every tread. That tells me it's either a bent axle out of alignment or the bearings are bad. Mm -hmm. So here's the real indicator that this bearing is bad. I'm moving it back and forth about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And that's why the tire is wearing weird. It's basically wobbling. It's wobbling going yeah. down the road. And that tells me the bearings are bad too. Now you also might have felt that in the way the trailer was, was moving behind you? Yep, and if I, I've had bearings go bad on the road, and many times, especially on a long road trip, which is when it'll happen because it has time to heat up, you'll watch your boat in the mirror, and all of a sudden you'll get a little wobble behind you. Okay. Just the, the trailer will start to wobble right. a little, it'll become unstable, it'll feel different. That's an indicator that there's something starting to go wrong, whether it's a tire, a bearing, what have you being conscious of how it looks in the mirror and how much it's moving right. is really a good thing. If you're wobbling at the start, you may not have a problem. You may be out of balance front to back. Mm. And on the road with stack trailers especially, it doesn't take much to get out of whack. Mm. So we've left Eustace with a triple, seen that wave when we got to the highway, gotten off, loosened the straps, moved each boat forward three inches, and it went away. Okay. So, you know, so it may, it may not be the bearings in that case. It may just be a Balance. mispositioned boat. Yeah. Yep, and on the scow trailers, most of the time, we're pretty set with how the bunks go, yep. and you're not going to see that. Right. But if you're a custom trailer like this one, homemade, you'll have the issue. Get to know where the balance point is. And yeah, and how it's going to ride, and it should just pull true and straight behind you. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull the wheel off, and you can certainly use a, a lug wrench for this. If you do, do it before you put it on the stand, okay. or it'll just spin in or circles. Spin, right. I've got an impact gun, and that'll make fast work of it. All right, and you can take a little closer look at the treads there and see that it's indicative of a problem. All right, well, okay. Yeah, it's really easy to see when you look uh, across the profile like this. Yep. You can see that this is a high spot and a low spot and a high spot and a low spot. Yep. So when this is done, I'm going to get a spare tire that didn't come with this. I'll get another tire. And I'll change this out and make this one the spare that right. I'll use if I get a flat on the road, but right. it certainly won't be my primary rolling stock. Right. So next thing I'm going to do is take this cover off. Two methods there. One, if you can get your screwdriver in, you can just work your way around and twist. I'm just going to give it a little tap, work my way around. It's starting to work its way off. I'm just kind of doing a pull out. Now, if you were if you were to try to work around your flathead screwdriver around the edge of that, if you're not careful, you could also raise the metal a little bit and cause opportunity for water to get in, couldn't you? Absolutely, and same thing with hitting it. If you hit it too hard, you can dent it. Um, you can find this Easy Lube dust cap all over the place, yeah. you know, any marine store or online. Right. So um, I didn't have any extras in my kit right now, but that's something I will keep in my bearing kit. Right, okay. Um, so I'm just going to start taking the parts. I'm going to make a pile of my parts on paper towels so I don't make a mess. I'm going to start a second paper towel tray for greasy mess. So I'm just taking the grease off here, trying to get a view of my castle nut. So 
These are my castle nuts right here with a cutter pin as a spare. And I'm trying to get clear to that. Is it a standard size or is it something that you have to really get measured, make sure you have the right Mo one? Most of them for the scout trailers. Uh, the scout trailers are generally a 2,000 pound axle trailer. Okay. The bearing size is an inch and 16th. Uh, 16. Um, they make a one inch size. If you're measuring very carefully, um, especially to the eye, a one inch shaft looks a lot like a one and six one and a sixteenth so don't just go by looks or by both or by both and return one yeah um but you're you know more of them in our world and in modern trailers are an inch and a sixteenth okay. on both when you get to a 3500 pound capacity axle there will be one bearing that's an inch and a sixteenth and one that's an inch and three eighths hmm. so i'm just getting enough of this clean that i can see my cotter pin here and this cotter pin is, was a pain on the other side. It is a piece of bar stock. It's not really a cotter pin. Right. So I'm going to be I'm going to very carefully try and get it to straighten out here. And if I put the video on hold, I'm going to get a hammer. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So I'm just trying to get this to straight. Okay, grab my little vice grips here. Let's see if I can work this out. I see a little more bend there. So what's interesting here is I can turn it very easily. And it still has a little bit of a hook in it, doesn't but it? It still has a little bit of a hook in it, so it's not coming out. Okay, so because I did this the other day, I know that about my hook, and I'm prepared with my cutting tool, uh -huh. and I'm going to cut the end of this off. But you're not, and you're not worried about files, shavings, you know, like. I'm gonna files. do it. I'm gonna fully clear this thing out of grease. So when you flush it, it'll take care of that. Yeah. Because I'm going to hammer in here, I'm going to take this grease fitting off before I get too deep in here. Looks like something you have to be very careful about not gumming up. Yeah, if it will even come out. This one looks like it's pressed in. Other side was threaded in. Okay, we'll edit that out. <laughs> okay. I'm almost tempted to take a hole punch to the other end of it. I have a hole punch that is where we may end up with this. Oh, it's moving. All right. All right. So the pin's out. So that is. So normally it'd be a cotter pin. In this case, they've used a bent piece of metal. Bent piece of metal. And what, why they did that is this grease fitting goes all the way through to a hole in the back. And it actually goes through these holes. So if it's not a fairly tight fit, it'll just squirt out the front. Oh, okay. Which is what will happen when we do. When the cotter pin goes in. Cotter pin goes in. So these easy lube sets are great for flushing your grease, but if it was contaminated, there was probably a reason it was contaminated. Um, so the next thing is just getting this castle nut off. It's loose because everything's worn inside. Mm -hmm. So I can just take it off by hand. I didn't 
need a wrench to get anywhere, but now I'm to the hole where it had a problem. And I'm just going to grab my channel locks and work it over that edge. So there's the castle nut. And you can see the holes right where the cotter pin was. Now I'm going to unseat the hub. And there's one bearing here that can fall right out. And then the whole thing slides off. So if you look inside, you can see the contaminated grease. And I'm going to grab a paper towel, just take a look at the bearing seat. As we look at the bearing seat, we can see where it was running and there's a little bit of pitting right in the bottom there. You can see little holes in the steel. Oh, okay. And then there's a lip going out, so we'll need to change this bearing seat. Mm. And the bearing in the back, I'm going to use my bearing puller. Just hop in right here. Use my feet at the clamp and it'll come right out. Mm. So there's our worn seal. Looks somewhat intact, but um, I'm not good. I've got a new one here, so I'll use the new one. Mm -hmm. Our second bearing comes out, and now we get rid of the grease. So, first step is I'm going to push most of the grease out, paper towel on paper towel. I'm just going to push one through the whole hub, and that'll push the bulk, the bulk out. That's a lot of grease. So now we have oh, yeah. our hub right here, mm -hmm. as you can see right through. You can see the seat on the other side. Since we're changing one, we'll change both. As you can see a little bit of washing around the edge. This one is questionable. Let's zoom in on that. You can kind of see the grooves where the bearing ran around it. Okay. Um, this one's questionable. It's in pretty good shape, but because we're changing one, we'll change the other. Okay. So that's a replaceable part inside there. Yep. So one of the things that we can do at this point, if we're cheating, is go to the store and a tractor supply, a northern tool, a West Marine, all sell this hub with grease in it with new bearings, new <laughs> seal, slide it right on and go. Right. Because it's got that easy loop dust cap, um, I think... Northern Tool is the only one that sells it with that dust cap. Mm. Um, that is the cheapest bearings, the cheapest grease, but it's way better than doing a bad job. Right. So, how much do you think that that whole unit would cost? That whole unit costs forty to fifty bucks. Okay. Um, with cheap components, and there have absolutely been a bunch of times in my life where I've just said, "That's the the play. We're going for it." So if you were on a on a trip somewhere, for example, that might be the way to go just to get it replaced quickly, then you yep. can repack your own later. Correct. Um, so next up, let's clean up the spindle and evaluate the spindle. I'm going through the threads as best I can. And let's take a look here. So right here, this is where our seal rides. On the other side, that was really chewed up, and I used this bearing buddy spindle seal. Okay. Now, what this does is our normal seal would just ride right here. Now this one, this bearing buddy set, has an extra little sleeve that we use to cover that, so it would go on right there. Okay. And then there's an O-ring. Then we put the O-ring on, and then we assemble the hub. Okay. What that does is it spaces everything out a couple of millimeters, or a couple thousand. But on the other side, what that meant 
was I didn't hit my cotter pin hole with my castle oh, nut. Right. So I had to go in with my Dremel and file out the castle nut mm. to make that fit. Make one of the uh, couple of the grooves a little deeper. A couple of the grooves a little deeper, mm -hmm. and I knew which ones because I'd already done my torquing down and checking oh. it. Um, because I don't have to on this side, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to keep this in my spares kit okay. because I'm going to run into another one that has an issue down the road. Okay. But that's something that I will have around. Um, and that was the threshold that says I'm going to replace this axle. And as I look on this side, right here, I don't like this scoring, I see. What that means, right in here, you've got a, a little bow of wear. Yeah. What that means is the bearing locked and it started spinning on the shaft. Oh, uh, okay. So now is it worn down enough that that axle's a problem now or it's it is it's, some is not something I would take on a five hour road trip. Um, really? You know, I I could, but I know that I know in my head there's a chance I'm gonna have an issue. So my plan for winter here and for local stuff, I'll hang on to this before I go on my real next road trip. I'm gonna buy another axle. Um, most trailer manufacturers will crank you out an axle a various price. Mm -hmm. For your scow axles, the, for a trailer that was made by Melgus, go to Melgus and they will get you exactly the axle that bolts right in from the manufacturer. Okay. You don't have to do any of this disassembly. You pull the wheels, unbolt here, unbolt there, pull the old one out, put the new one in, they will sell it to you with the hubs all greased and installed, okay. ready to go. So that's your other cheat, is just buy an axle from Melgus and have it be happy. Okay. Um, my other plan here, and this is redundant for sure, but when I buy the new axle, I will probably bolt this axle to my frame right in front or right behind with the hubs on as it. As a spare? As a spare when I'm on the road. If I really blow up on the road, hmm. you know, I don't need to even dig into anything. I can just undo the bolts and right. swap my axle and go. Right. So bending an axle, having, a, having your axle on the end wear too much or whatever, this would be a backup? Yep. Okay, interesting. You've blown your bearings so much that they dis disintegrated and you spun the axle. Right. Um, or you just damaged the spring seat. You know, mm. there's that repair kit, but I had to search far and wide to find that it existed right. on Amazon. And then two days to get it here. Okay. You're not getting that on the side of the road oh. unless you already own it. <laughs> right. Uh, which of these things would you say, if you're taking a long road, like you're going to Black Tie in, in uh, Texas, which of these things would you buy and carry with you just as a normal course, even if you don't think you have a problem? So the C.E. Smith brand, which is the people who sold me the bearings, actually sell a greased hub ready to go in a little plastic carrying case like that. Hmm. I would have that along. Smart to have. Because yeah. if I catch it while the trailer is just in a little bit of weave or at a gas station stop, uh, then I, I can change it out before I've toasted my axle right. in most cases. Well, and with all of our boats, the last thing you want to do is to drop a wheel and, you and know, damage, the boat. damage the boat and torque the car and all that. Right. And the earlier you catch it, the better. So my philosophy at a gas stop, I'll walk around, I'll check all my straps, and I'll put the back of my hand to the hub, mm. just tap it, make sure it's not hot. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, depending on the grease you use, it will sometimes be warm to the touch, mm -hmm. but never hot. Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk about grease when we get to that step. Okay. So... Let's look at our wheel bearing kit. Now that we've pulled all the parts out and look at how the bearings go together. So the bearing and the cup seat together like this. And on the back side, you're going to put it in this way and on the front side, this way. So the two cones are facing each other and when you tighten the bolt, you're sucking it together. Mm -hmm. That's how you end up with no play. Instead of really precise bearings that don't move this way, it's a cone, so when you tighten the bolt, they force together, mm, okay. and you get a nice deal. Um, it is best practice when you change bearings to change the cup, the cup as well. Okay. So even without wear, you know, if you bought it as a set, you should do it. And if you change brands, you don't know that the angles are as perfect, properly. especially with the way things are made so in China. Just, so just to recap, this would be the inside, the other would match inside back to back to this in a mirror Correct. mirror fashion, and this would be to the outside, so you're clamp, yep. clamping them in this way. Okay. Correct. So, on most of our 2,000 pound axle trailers, this is a bearing 44649, uh, L44649, this is L44610. Okay. And the inner grease seal, if you're going to an auto parts store, you know, if you walk into an auto zone, you'll need those part numbers. Okay. They won't know what a trailer bearing is. Hmm. 
they work off of part numbers. Okay. If you walk into CNM Auto Parts in McGuanago and you say, I've got an inch and sixteenth trailer bearing, they'll know these parts off the top of their head because they're because out, you've been in there so often. Because they're, they're out here in farm country and all, yeah. everybody changes their own bearings. Yeah. The spin, the seals you need um, is generally an out on this size is an outside diameter of one point nine eight, and if I'm really technical about it, it's one point nine eight six. So it pushes in uh, is the right one if you're ordering from like a bearings incorporated, and then the inside is an inch and a quarter. Okay. Unless you're using this proprietary size on the spindle kit. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do is drive the races out. So, I'm going to take my beating hammer, which hammer or beating screwdriver. Um, we need to get some eye protection because a piece could go flying. Okay. And I've really beaten this one up. This is a Weha screwdriver that ha the shaft goes all the way through and it's mm -hmm. actually made to hit um, with a steel cap on the back. Mm -hmm. okay. Most screwdrivers you can Don't use a plastic screwdriver that will shatter. You will split the cap yeah. and run it out of there. So, in your old world, Craftsman Professional made a great line that had steel hitting caps. The races. So this this is the the race right here, okay. or the cup. And so that's what's already sitting inside of that. That's what's already sitting inside on both sides. Okay. So there's a little bit of a lip proud right here on both sides. Yep. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth. This is really hardened steel. Mm -hmm. This is really hardened steel. Right. So I will probably damage the cup going out so I won't reuse it. Mm -hmm. If you use a strict mild steel that's unhardened, or a brass drift is even better, mm -hmm. you might be able to reuse the cup, but if, again, if you're changing the bearing, you shouldn't reuse the cup. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna set this away from my hitting. Giving it some pretty good hits. Yes, it's it takes a fair amount of force to get it out of there. So now I'm up against the ground. So my trick is to go to the non-cosmetic side of my <laughs> wheel, flip it and over, drive it through, yeah. and then I got somewhere for it to go. And but it's, it's smart to start the process on the macadam so that then that way you're not hammering so hard on the wheel. Right, and I just needed a little light tap to get it out of there. Right. So now you can see it where the bearing right, where seat is. Mm -hmm. And this is the cup that came out. Right. And if we clean it up, we can see whether I damaged it or not. And as a testament to how hard this steel is, I only see one little nick hmm. after all that hitting. Right. Wow, okay. So this is really hard. Um, part of the reason for the eye protection is that it will, sometimes this will crack and a piece will go flying. Right. So now I'm going to the other, going after the other side. Now my goal is to get this very clean, okay. and I'm going to start, let's get rid of all this, start on clean paper towel, so we don't want any contaminants. I'm just going to start going through paper towels. So now is this something where you want to get every little bit of grease out of there because it can contaminate the other grease or it yeah, could have it, some floating metallic? In, in the perfect world, yeah. In the perfect world, I'll take it to a part washer okay. with some kerosene and go to town. Yeah. Um, or just kerosene and rags and get this as perfect as I can. In this world, I'm going to, for 
sake of speed and knowing I'm getting another axle for here, I'm just going to get a paper cloth, paper towel clean. So walk through the worries. Why are you doing this? Because you're worried about filings that might be in there and destroy the new bearings? Filings, old grease that may have water contamination or filings. Right. Um, that play that we felt in the wheel before we took it off means that that much bearing turned to powder. Right, right. So it went somewhere and it basically became particulate inside the grease. Inside the grease. So. Now we're looking, we can see the rough cast surface before machining in there, but we've got it mostly cleaned out. So now I'm gonna start with the back side and let's look at how we pack the new bearings. So one way is to put a change to a fresh set of gloves so I don't contaminate this at all. Get my hands dry so they go in the gloves. <laughs> Get all the condensate off. So on the other side, there was not enough lip for me to drive out the cups, and I had to go in with my Dremel and cut the race. Now what that meant is I also dug into the hub, mm. made sure I took a file to it, and you know, 99% of that round other than the groove is still there to get the cup. Mm -hmm. I can probably get away with it. Is it best practice? No, I should have a new hub. Again, I'm going for a new axle. But if you absolutely are in a pinch and you've got to get it out, a little cutting wheel on the Dremel, you can cut through that race and then it'll pop right out. Right, okay. So I need to drive this in and I'm making sure that the taper is wider coming out of the hub on both sides. So if you don't have all the tools, the last thing you want to do is hit it with a screwdriver and damage that race even microscopically. So there's a size of socket that's probably in the ballpark of inch and three quarter that you can use a socket to drive it in. You can use a brass drift because the dr brass is softer than the hardened bearing race. Or you can use this nice bearing driver kit that was about 40 bucks. So I'm just gonna do that. So a block of, of wood and a rubber mallet wouldn't be a good idea? Well, you can get it flush, but then you can't get and it to seat all the way in. All the way in, right. So this is aluminum, very soft. I'm not going to damage the race any. And it's going to take some pretty hard hits to get it in there. Okay, so I drove it in, I felt it move, and I kept going until it got really hard again. And I'm going to make sure it's really seated. Yeah. So I'm going to do the other side right away. Now, before I get greasy, I'm going to swap out to one bigger size, and I'm going to put it in backwards to drive my seal. Oh, okay. So I have a nice flat surface to drive my grease seal. So, pack the glove up. And now we'll pack the bearings. Okay, so let's talk about grease. Number one is the type of grease. Um, you can spend as little as a couple dollars on grease, or you can spend as much as 10 or $12 on grease and you can buy it in a tub or you can buy it in a grease cartridge. Um, if I'm doing this by hand, I'll buy it in a tub. And my absolute favorite is Amsoil Synthetic um, made for trailers. Um, marine power sport trailer, synthetic water resistant grease. So when a seal goes and some water gets into this, it will absorb a dunking and it'll, the grease won't completely break down on the first trip home. Okay. So I do this because it's a, it's gotten me out of a jam more than once. And you're talking about ten bucks for that versus four, so it's pretty inexpensive. Pretty inexpensive. Insurance. I always keep a couple jars of it around. It is a very nice, rich blue color, right. and when it changes to black, I know I've got a problem. Right. Um, 
The other standby is Red and Tacky, which you can get at any, any shop. Okay. Red and Tacky is a fantastic grease. It doesn't necessarily absorb water, but it's a really high quality grease that withstands heat pretty well. So you can, you know, that's my next choice. Okay. I have seen store brand marine grease blow on a brand new job that went across country and came back and blew up coming into Chicago in bad traffic. And it was absolutely a grease failure. Mm. Took it into the shop and they said, oh, you didn't have enough grease. And I'm like, all right, I'm bringing you the hub. Yeah. And it's completely packed with grease. Mm. It was to tolerance. The grease just simply failed. Mm. And that made me a believer that spending a few dollars more in grease makes a lot of difference. Well, and this is marked seven ninety nine. So again, it's just very inexpensive yeah. protection. Yeah, and locally I got this at Anchors Away in Waukesha, who's a great little mom and pop shop yeah. that knows the right stuff and introduced yeah. me to this, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. So if I'm packing it by hand, I'm going to put some in my hand and just kind of work my way around and bite into the bearing. Right, okay. Here, I'm going to use this greasing tool that was about six bucks. Mm -hmm. Drop my bearing on, roughly center it. Screw this down. And then I'm going to get out my grease gun. Huh. Now, I've got an electric grease gun because I end up doing a lot of greasing for work. A hand grease gun works just fine too. But you get into the angle, look straight down that. Look straight this way straight or this in, way? into here. There's some grease in there from before. But I'm going to start grease and I'm waiting for grease to work its way through the bearing and come out. So now I can start seeing it come out of the bearing. Right. So now I've kind of charged the inside of the bearing. So I just cheated on all that hand work. Right. <clears throat> but this also would help to make sure you're driving the air out. Correct. <clears throat> the other method may be a little less uh, reliable. Yeah. So after I've done that, I'm going to unscrew, grab my bearing out, grab some of the grease, and I'm still going to work into, st still work it in by hand. Make sure I've got good penetration, and I'm just going to roll it. And if it's not full, I'll hear air bubbles in there. Really? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I've got the bearing, first bearing greased. I'm going to go back to how to beaten on this. Get some fresh paper towel down. I'm going to go lugs down, so I'm working with the back of the hub toward the axle. And I'm going to take a little grease, just go around the, seat, the race here. And I'm going to take my greased bearing and drop it in. Mm -hmm. Clean up a little bit. I'm going to grab my grease seal out of my kit. Take a little bit of grease and just lube up the inside of the seal here because that's going to be rubbing on the trailer. And the little cup side, you can see there's a little spring in there. Okay. That's what holds it tight. So I'm going to put that to the inside, grabbing my driver set. Get nice and centered. and drive it in flush. Okay. And you're going to need that again on the other side? Yep. Oh, but you have to... I've already done the other side of this trailer, so... Right. Th th this seal is only on the back. Oh, it's only on the inside, okay. So, now I'm done with my seal driver kit. Okay. And I'm going to close it and lock it. Don't ask me how I know. Then you don't have the opportunity to trip. Ah. So, the last thing I'm going to do is take my grease gun and just put a little grease behind it, behind the bearing. And now I can slide it onto the shaft. 
I'm going to take a little grease, make sure I hit that ceiling surface mm -hmm. again, and just do a little bit all the way down the shaft here so that I have a nice smooth slide. And just slowly work the alignment. Now I feel like I'm all the way in, but I haven't seated on the seal yet. So I'm just going to nicely twist and there I'm all the way in. So the next thing I'm going to do is fill that cavity with grease. Okay. All right, we got lots of grease in there, and now I'm going to pack my other bearing. All right, now I'm coming out the bottom, which means I'm not tight, tight enough or I don't have a good seal. We see here. Okay, now I'm coming out the sides of the bearing some, like last time. Grease. And if I hadn't done this, I would go about double or triple the amount of packing I'm doing right now if I hadn't gone through the. Uh, if you didn't do the other. The other. Packer, yeah. Yep. So I just go through there, got a nice smooth turn, no bubbling noise. And I'm going to go right into the shaft here and we're on and rolling. Mm. Now it kind of wants to pop back at me, but that's okay. So clean up my excess grease. Off my hands. And let's clean off the excess here so we can have a good visual working area. And I'm going to go back to my castle nut. Um, what I haven't done yet is clean all, all the old grease off that castle nut. So I'm just going to... Are you going to reuse that castle nut then? So I'm looking at this, I can see a little rub here. So because that rub is there, I'm going to get my new castle nut kit out. And these are impossible to find anywhere but the internet. Oh really? Okay. So there are two ways to do it. I guess you can find it, but I'll give you the caveat to finding it. Um, the internet, this is about eight bucks on Amazon. If you're tackling this job, it's good insurance that you will finish the job without right. needing more parts. Right. If you don't, all you're out is a little bit of money. So in this kit, we have more cotter pins, we have castle nuts, and we have washers. This particular filler didn't have a washer in front of the bearing. Some do. Make sure when you take it apart, you note what you had or you'll get your spacing wrong. So. I'm going to compare this castle nut, make sure that the grooves are deep enough, which it appears they are. I'm looking at this distance to this face. Right. That looks okay. I'll take a little bit of grease, get it on the thread so it goes on clean. And all you're trying to do there is just make sure that the castle nut, when it goes on tightly, you can still fit your, your cotter pin through the, yep. the holes. So I'm 
that was a little tight. I know it was tight coming off. So I'm just giving it the slightest little bit if it doesn't thread on clean. Yeah. Be careful that you don't cross thread it and be there. I know the threads were a little mucked from the cotter pin and I'm not putting much effort into it right now in it at all. Is the thread pretty strand standardized or is there a fine and a coarse thread? So on this, this is a like a one inch eight, but it was the only castle nut that was available on Amazon and that made it pretty easy to say, okay, okay I think it'll work. Yeah. So I don't know how standard it is, but it was the only one available. So while you may have something different, it's a good chance this will be right. Okay, so now I'm into compressing the bearing. And this is, again, very little effort. I'm just using the wrench to not get grease too much on my fingers for the moment. So I'm all the way tight there. So the next thing I'm going to do is rotate this and just see how it feels. It feels nice and smooth, but it's a little tight. So in order to just clear some of my stuff out of the way so I can get in there. In order to get this seated where it really needs to be, I'm going to really crank on this. And now I can't even I can barely turn this. But what I'm doing is drive the bearings in. Driving the bearings together. So after I do that I'm gonna go around a few times and then I'm gonna back it off to the next castle nut location. See how I feel? Pretty loose. Let's go back one more. Now I'm really loose. But I don't have any play. So that's the one I want to be at. Okay. So I want it to spin free. On the directions for the bearing, it said you want one to seven thousandths of clearance, which is imperceptible to the human eye, yeah. but you don't want to feel any movement. However, you don't want it to be tight. It should be spinning pretty free there. Grab my cotter pin. So you mentioned that this won't be 100% tight because it's a cotter pin instead of a, a solid steel pin. Yeah, so the, the movement is not a concern. Is it grease uh, flowing out of there or anything else? That so you... it's the grease, when I, if I, when I go and tap this, you'll see the grease will come out those holes instead of driving out the back. Yeah. So that's why I had to pack it nicely. Okay, so I have my cutter pin in. I'm backwards, so I'm going to put the long side out. I'm going to grab my side cutters. because it's a really good grip on the cotter pen. And bend the cotter pen up. And on this side, I'm just gonna cut the cotter pen off. And make sure that it didn't go in there, which it didn't, it shot over that way. Make sure it's not in there to eat something up. And I'll clean up my dust cap of old grease. Again, parts washer, kerosene, and rags will really get this cleaned up properly. We'll get as much of that old gross grease out as we can. Be liberal with your paper towel use. <laughs> So if you weren't thinking of replacing your axle, then you would definitely go the kerosene route and do full yep. pristine cleaning. Full pristine cleaning. And there are some greases that are incompatible with each other. Oh, okay. So generally that's not going to be in trailer grease, but you never know what the person before you used yeah. if you didn't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were using my second job in 12 months when I come back at this, it was fresh. I, and I saw that it was already blue, I wouldn't be so concerned that my mm -hmm. grease was good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd just go to go there and do it. So, my dust cap, I'm just gonna 
kind of go around in a circle so I don't damage it. One more wipe with the paper towel. Front, back, all the way around the side so I know if there's any blue spraying grease, it's from me. <laughs> I know I have a problem. One of my new rubber caps. And you're not, so you're not going to use your um, grease gun in order to spray into there because you already packed it all Correct. by hand. Correct. Yep. And that's really the right way to do it. Okay. Uh, the idea with that is instead of, you can cheat. And if you think your bearings are good but you just want to change the grease, you can shoot grease in and force all the old out. Okay. And see a color change. If you needed to do it in the first place, you probably had a problem with the seal. Yeah. So, you know, while that is maybe okay if you had no issues and you're just yeah. being protective and you know your grease is compatible, yeah. you can do that, but really you're not doing yourself any favors, not doing the full service long run. And how often do you do this? Do you do this as a preventative? You, you actually saw a problem. But... I actually saw a problem on this one, which was the grease there when I bought this trailer. Um, and this one had this wheel had play, and I had the wear on the tires. All mm -hmm. good indicators that I had an issue. In general, this is a once a year and before a long road trip. Okay, so it is once a year. Yep, and I'll generally do it before winter, because if you had water in there, and you let it sit all winter long and freeze, thaw, corrode, rust, you can end up with a much bigger mess in the spring than you ha might have had today. Mm -hmm. And you'd be really Sorry you didn't do this here in nice yeah. sunny October when it's yeah. 72 out. Right. And you saved yourself the problem. Yeah. So for next year, if I was using this axle I might, and wasn't doing a new one, even with my new axle, I'll probably run until the trip to Minnetonka, mm -hmm. which will be a four or five hour road trip. Right. And before Minnetonka, I'll pull it apart, make sure everything is happy yeah. and give it a check. Um, if I'm in a gambling mood, yeah. I will lift it, spin it, see if there's any noise, see if there's any play. If there's not, and I don't see any indications of a leak, I'll pop this cover, make sure I don't see any water, and let it roll. But in that case, again, where you've, you've just repacked it, um, let's say you weren't worried about your axle, you're about to go on your four to five um, hour drive to Minnetonka, you uh, maybe open up that, that cap there, you see it's still blue, might you just juice some grease into that? Uh, nipple and and refresh it that way. Um, I probably wouldn't even do the grease if I was Not pretty happy it. with how it looked. Okay. Um, but I know that I'm still I'm watching extra hard at how I'm swaying, right. make sure I don't have an issue, because it is important to right. Not drag your boat down. Not drag the your boat. <laughs> so the last piece of this is to get a good look at your air pressure on your tire. Hmm. There's a maximum air pressure on there. They like to run up near that max. And if they don't, it will generate heat and that will cause a flat tire. Mm. The other thing that's really important going down the road when you're towing the trailer is to be smooth in your driving. And that means not weaving back and forth. That means eyes well ahead of you on the road. And if you're getting tired, you'll have a tendency to switch from a nice smooth analog driving to what I call digital driving where you're All right. making corrections. Yeah. That's when you'll see the trailer tar start to sway. Mm. In addition to being a little bit dangerous, the tail wagging the dog, the trailer sway also will heat up your tires, put extra load on your bearings. That's when things go wrong. So mm. if you're team driving to an event and you see yourself doing it or you notice your partner doing it, where they get digital driving, it's time to stop. Check your tires, make sure you're not too hot, let things right. cool off, or you can end up on the side of the road in Atlanta. And possibly switch drivers. And switch drivers. Put a rested driver in there. Put a rested driver in there. Get some, ca you know, get some caffeine. Or, if you're really being safe, be done for the night. Yeah. Get a room. You know, maybe you thought you were going to go through the night. If you're tired, mm -hmm. you, the penalty is a lot less for getting a room for the night and being late than it is for having an accident, potentially hurting someone. Right. All right. So, final disclaimer: I am not an auto mechanic. <laughs> Uh, yeah. This is all stuff I've learned from my experience and from smart people around me, but I don't claim that this is right. endorsed as in any way, shape, right. or form as the absolute Bible way to do things. Yep. So It's a way it is a that way. you do it and uh, might be helpful suggestions. Right. 
and every video I've seen really didn't go through all of these steps and how to look at things, so that's why I felt it was appropriate to do this video and talk through the steps. And the cheats, which is by that grease tub, you know, it's cheap parts, cheap grease, but it's a pretty quick way to get you on the road, having that as a spare. Now you've seen, if you've done your bearings at home, you know how easy it is to come apart, pull the castle nut, pull the, pull the um, pin, slide a new hub on, you're back on the road. You know, awesome. You can get yourself out of a jam. The last thing I'm going to do is tighten this up. I'm going to put the wheel on and get uh, So, the right way to do this is to tighten these up finger tight, drop it, get some weight on there, get a torque wrench, and torque around. In a star pattern. In a, in a star cetera. pattern. Right. Okay. And then what you do is after you've driven it for a while, you check those again and make sure they were still tight. Yep. So, the next thing I'm going to do is go out for a test drive. Right. And I'm going to drive 5-10 minutes, try and get up to speed. And I'm just going to stop, get out, put my finger to the back of the hub, make sure everything's okay, give the wheel a shake, make sure there's no play in the wheel. I've got no noise. Um, in the past, I've gotten to Madison after doing this job, and I hadn't seated one of the cups all the way, it turns out. Hit a bump, it seated. Mm. And all of a sudden, I saw the trailer moving, I pulled over, I had some heat, mm. pulled it apart, saw that it was a little loose, tightened it up, no harm, no foul other than a little time on the side of the road. Right. So, um, the right way to have done that if I owned one was a hydraulic press mm -hmm. to push those in. I think I gave it a pretty good whack. Mm -hmm. That's also the reason I bought this seating kit for 40 bucks. Because right. side of the road is not where you want to be working on this. Right.